How's it going everyone? My name is Jake and I'm here with another free VST AX plugin review. Today we're going to take a listen to the Sun EQ by Sonimus. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. This is a three band EQ that has quite a bit of character and I really quite I quite really quite like it. In this video I'm going to give you a sample of how the plugin sounds as well as the good and bad qualities of this processor. But before we get into this video, I want to know from any viewer, what would make these videos better? What would make this information more understandable and easier to apply to your mixes? Also, let me know if you like my, my content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications and all that jazz. I've got a bunch of ideas and any feedback will help me create better, more informative content for you. So without further ado, let's listen to the Sun EQ. So the Sun EQ, as I said, is a three band EQ obviously with some filters. And the first thing that I've kind of noticed was the boost and attenuation here on the low frequency EQ. This is kind of like the Poltec analog EQ, which is pretty interesting, has the boost and attenuation, the shelves. And it's a fixed frequency low EQ, as you can see, uh, 20, 30, 60, and 100 hertz. And so you're probably asking, you know, why, why would you ha want both the boost and attenuation and the thing is, when you start to both boost and attenuate a fixed frequency, it starts to kind of create a bell, and you can kind of shape that bell through how much you're boosting and attenuating. So it's a pretty cool aspect of a pretty cool uh, way of incorporating more control over an EQ. And that's something that like the Poltec EQ used, which I was always quite a, kind of a fan of. I really like the way it sounds. So when I saw it on this free plugin, I, I thought it was pretty awesome. And I also thought it sounds pretty, pretty good. Um, moving on to the mid, we have a fully parametric actually, because you have this mid high EQ, this high Q here. So you can somewhat have a little bit of control over your, your Q. And so this one goes, goes from 150 to 4k Hertz and it's slidable, which is pretty nice. So it's pretty versatile in the range. However, the one issue that I've found with this mid EQ is there's a lot of coloration. As you can see, I did actually boost a lot and you're probably just like, Jake, you're boosting 9 dB. Of course, there's gonna be coloration. But if you take a look back at like the TDR Nova, the one that I re reviewed last uh, last time in my, in my free plugin reviews, that one just, it, it was so mild and you could really move and really push the gain and still not have, you know, too, too much coloration, which is something I really, really liked. Cause I like to make big adjustments to make sure that I'm actually hearing it before I settle in on a specific area. Um, the high EQ is also a fixed frequency of six, eight, 12 and 15 kilohertz and just a normal, uh, shelf boost and attenuate. This is kind of nice. It adds a little bit of shimmer on around six and eight K 12 to 15 K Hertz. I haven't really found too much use for, but still nice to have just in case you want to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more sonic range into your mixes. So this is, you know, this is all good and good and dandy. Anyways, uh, moving forward, looking at the drive, this is essentially a low and mid frequency range saturation control and it's kind of nice you can kind of mess with the input and the drive to kind of decide how much saturation you want to add into the element that you're putting this processor on so it's just something to add a little bit more character into your mixes uh this w0 this i don't even know what this is it's a w o o w control I'm not sure what that stands for but what i read is essentially it's a all pass filter so it messes with the phase alignment of your track so it's not something that i would necessarily see being used on a single channel more of more it's more of like a end result thing that you're putting on at the end of your mix to fix any issues but it might end up creating some kind of phase issues if you're putting it on some tracks and not on some others and of course you know the output is just to kind of make make up for any extra gain that you're putting in with all of all of these boosts here that you can see so i've dialed back the output quite a bit um so yeah it's kind of a kind of a quick look at all of this eq's potential and what all the parameters do so let's move on and kind of take a listen to how this eq sounds 
So what I did just like the last time that I did a review, I'm gonna, I kind of added only one instance to every single channel and kind of really test its limits and see how much it can help the mix. I really kind of like this method and I can see that the Sun EQ is less subtle than what I've done in the past and it actually makes quite a big difference. So I'm quite a fan, quite a bit of a fan of the Sun EQ and I think I'm definitely gonna use it in, in the future in my own mixes. So let's start by taking a listen and we're gonna have everything bypassed at first. I'm gonna slowly add in each channel and just try to focus on what I'm highlighting on so that you can hear the difference. And there you have it. That is a review and quick listen to the potential of the Sun EQ. Free, three band, two filter, drive control EQ. This is a quite interesting plugin, and you know, I because it's free, I definitely recommend giving it a giving it a try. I think I'm gonna probably use it in the future at least a few times. It's quite nice. Uh, I, like I said, it's less subtle and has a lot of character to it so it's definitely useful i'm i'm a fan um so yeah just let me know if you enjoy this video if there's anything that you'd recommend uh, to help me kind of communicate better to you this information i would greatly appreciate it and stay tuned for more reviews more mixed walkthroughs and some more videos definitely coming soon so have a good one guys